Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. This is the On The Stacks Podcast. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, because I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going no. Took me a long time to get there, and I think I was like, I need to have like a worthy pursuit. Like I should be a lawyer, or I should like do something that matters. But I'm like, this matters. It's just in a different way. So I think a big turning point for me was like admitting to myself that this is like a worthy field to pursue. And then once I did that, I was like, okay, like it. You know what I mean? And I feel like until I got the PA PA live job, it was still kind of hard to admit to myself. And I was spending all the time on the podcast and I was like, what is it all for? Like Today, I'm chatting with Rachel Malik, co-host and producer of PA Live. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his Burn Board offers a low impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. This episode is brought to you by Blue Door Financial. Blue Door Financial will help you save money and reduce taxes to live a fuller financial life. To learn more, visit Blue Door Financial online at bludoorfinancial.com. That's bludoorfinancial.com. What's up, podcast episode 106 of the On The Stacks podcast in the Blue Door studio. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. I feel... I feel so happy to be here and also like a little bit at home. I did get my, my roots are in podcasting, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's nice to have on a fellow content creator and podcaster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is exciting. I will say my, the level of my production was not quite this level. So it feels a lot more official and a lot cooler to be like <laughs> on this end of it with like you doing all the work. Mine was not like this. Mine was like Zoom calls with my friends from college, but the, the bare bones are the same, right? Yeah, like, I yeah, appreciate the craft. It's cool to be on this yeah, end, though. Yeah, it's, it's a little easier just to show up and, yeah. you know, not have to, like... I mean, you saw the production. I spent the last 25 minutes fiddling with the cameras but over I love here. it. It makes it feel all the realer. I was like, you see, yeah. a camera... I've got three cameras on me right now. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, let's let's kind of let's kind of start with, you know, you know you, you've you been doing content creation mm-hmm. for a long time, and mm-hmm. um, you're at PA Live now. Yeah. Um, so, so, tell me, where did, where did it all get started for you? I think, honestly, the truest form was the podcast itself, but I think that was very much a product of my college experience. I loved my college experience. I went to Fordham University in the Bronx. I wanted to be close to the close to the city, close to New York, and that was just like the perfect balance of being like its own little campus, but close enough to the city where I could like get city experiences. I was like very obsessed with all the shows that are coming to mind, like Sex and City, duh, Gossip Girl. Like I wanted to be all of those girls, and I just college was my first entry point in I couldn't move anywhere until college so I did that and I met the people who ended up doing the podcast with me and I think that's where I started like the seed was planted of like wait a minute like this is not only a fun thing to do but a thing that could maybe turn into a career or at least like something that's a worthy passion project right like it's been like you know better than anyone it's there's a lot that goes into it and like the production of a show is like an intimidating thing but I think I felt so proud of every episode and it's just like, yeah, the seed was planted. That's that's how it all began. Yeah. And I think even like I think the thing with me and you can probably agree with this is like, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I started, like I'm I'm glad I knew nothing about it when mm-hmm. I started. Mm-hmm. I still kind of don't know anything. I just <laughs> pretend I do. Uh, but I think the I think the best part was is that you kind of went into it like almost like sort of naive. Yeah. And I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Because if you know too much ahead of time, you might just psych yourself out and be like, oh, I can't do all that. That's the thing. Like, I think if you knew how much time goes into producing an episode and outlining an episode, and I would always joke, like, I think one thinking about one singular episode of a show, it's like you as the host experience that episode like 12 times, right? Like you 
have the idea, you pitch the idea to whoever the guest is going to be. And then you're outlining the questions that you're going to ask them. And then by the time you get to the interview, it's like, oh, the work is done. But it's like, no, it's definitely not. Because then it's all the edits and like <laughs> yeah. the amount of time you would sit with like an hour of content. It's insane. Like I just would watch the hours like spin away. And I'm yeah. like, what am I? There were moments too where it's like, what am I doing? Like it's a lot. And I think it took a while for me to like see any return. And that isn't until I got the job I have now. You know what I mean? The podcast itself was never a raving success, but I think that almost makes me more proud of it because it's like, I think it would have been easier to keep doing it if it was successful. Cause I'd be like, Oh, so many people are watching. Like people would be so disappointed if I didn't have an episode, but nobody cared. <laughs> like if I didn't put an episode out on a Sunday, I was the only person who was upset by it. But that almost makes me more proud of it because I just like held myself to this. Like I have to get it out. Like I want to be regimented with it. And I think that without even realizing what I was doing, I like set the standard for like the professional that I wanted to be. And it's funny because it's like, <laughs> I, it sets that professional standard, but I also was talking about like the most random things. Like the <laughs> people that I was asked, like, what's your show about? And I'm like, that's a great question. Like, I don't know what the show is about. Like the show is about whatever I feel like talking about that week, which was just a random little potpourri of anything and everything. And it made for a cool experience. Cause I was like, I don't even know what my next week's episode is going to be. So like the listeners sure don't, it's a, it's a treat for everyone. True, a true mystery. Listen, truly. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Like, who's who's going to be on? No yeah. clue. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, I'll figure out who says yes to this email. At the you last know? minute. 11th hour power. I've, that's, I've been there. I know. I, I know the feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just got to you just got to push through. That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do a little bit more planning nowadays, but still like stuff happens. People cancel. Right. People, you don't have to reschedule. And mm-hmm. it's and as you know, like, yeah. like the production, like you said, like, you know, yes. between pre-episode right now recording and all the stuff that's going to go on between now and the time this episode comes out i'll, I'll hear this 75 times that's what i mean you're gonna be yeah. like if i hear rachel's so, voice, one, more one more time, time. <laughs> no literally yeah, yeah, yeah i would laugh that like my, i had my regulars like the friends that would always come on the show like i have a friend emma spoldy always came on the show ali giordano always came on the show kevin virgo was like the life of the show by the end because anytime i needed anything i would write him i would shoot him a text like ascendance i'd be like i'm thinking about feeling lonely let's do a podcast episode about it and he'd be like I'm there and he would outline and we would be on the show and we would have a three hour long thing that I had to edit down to 40 minutes and I'm like Kevin like it was always great because he always like provided the content but anyway I, I bring that up to say you would spend so much time editing I would like know what the sound wave of like one of Emma's ums looks like like I knew exactly what you know where everyone, to cut it exactly like yeah. I knew just looking at it that it was like oh Emma said, um, or like Kevin cleared his throat because that's like the kind of <laughs> cough he does when he yeah. thinks no one can, you know what I mean? Like, it's just funny things like that where you got so used to like the ins and outs, but oh, it was fun. It was yeah. fun. So tell me about your time in New York City at Forum. It was amazing. I think it was, I went not knowing a soul, which I think was an important thing for me when I was picking a school. I was like, it, I think also a lot of kids from my high school went to Penn State. That was like the thing to do. A lot of kids in my friend group went to Penn State. And I always think like if I went to Penn State, it just would have been a different life because I think I would have been stuck with those friends. And they're great friends. Like it wouldn't have been bad to be stuck <laughs> with them. But I think I would like going to Fordham in a city I was completely unfamiliar with, knowing not a soul, I was forced to just be like, here I am. Like I'm going to show up and I'm going to like try to be myself and try to make friends and like, you know, take the city head on. And like I say, take the city head on. We were on a gated campus. It didn't feel like I wasn't like in the streets of the Bronx. That's another thing. People always are like, Oh, you lived in the Bronx. I was like, no, I didn't. Like I lived at Fordham in the Bronx. It's very different. But the point is, is I think it was a challenge for myself to just like jump in and be like, you always said you want to be a city girl. Let's figure out like, let's see if you could do it and like learn the subway and do the things. And I just quickly met like really incredible people who came from all different places and had different, opinions than me I think that's the other thing about this area in my experience anyways like a lot of people thought the same way at least a lot of people that I like grew up around so it was just really like eye-opening to go to Fordham and be like wow like I feel like I'm a more compassionate person because of the people that I met there and the stories that I heard and like the fact that I was kind of forced out of that bubble and forced to talk about uncomfortable things or just like things I don't know I remember the first time one of my first like meetings I was in this club at Fordham freshman year I was like fresh into it was called urban plunge we like went to school before school started to like get to know the Bronx and do these community service projects and I thought this is a great way to like move in and really get myself settled before classes start so I did it and we're at the first meeting and like someone asked me what my pronouns were and I was like what like what do you mean and they were like well what are they and I was like she and they were like okay but I was like wait a minute like what like it just was so foreign to me and I think now like looking back that's like so weird to think because I think that's such a normal thing now it's like you want to be considerate and you want to like ask people that kind of stuff but it was just like truly never crossed my mind so I think that set the stage for like 
you, like you got to be a little more considerate and like think about other people's experiences because everyone had a very different experience than me. Like everyone's experience is different. So Fordham was like very good in that way that it forced me out of my comfort zone and forced me to like, I don't know, think about people who had different upbringings than me and stuff like that. So I think taking all of that away in a city where that's just like, I don't know, there's like nothing but opportunity and potential. And like, I just so bought into all of that. And it's just like the most cool thing to sit with it was just I really feel lucky that I got to go there and meet the people that I did it was really fun so it sounds like you had a great experience oh my gosh yeah it was I like I truly like Fordham was so the right call for me it was just amazing I met the best people I would do it all over again yeah it's so nice yeah so I think before we go on any further I feel like we have to give Chris Bohinsky a oh shout gosh. out here because he's we probably do. right now he's probably like watching this and he's like oh my god we're 10 minutes in they you have, they have off. and they haven't talked about me yet <laughs> No, yes, we do have Chris. So I feel like it is such a perfect partnership for Chris and I. I think it's so special that we both get to do PA Live knowing that being raised in this area, like we're both natives to Northeastern Pennsylvania. So the fact that we get to do it together and we're from relatively the same area and he just also, I mean, you know, Chris, I think Chris is just the kind of person who he's fun to work alongside every day but beyond that he's so good at what he does and I think with jobs like ours you it people know you're good at it if they don't think about how much work goes into it do you know what I mean like yeah. as effortless as you make it yes. seem yeah somebody somebody once said to me not yeah. to pay up, but somebody no. once said to me like oh you make it you make all of it look so easy mm-hmm. and I'm like I never really thought of it that way and you kind of just said that yeah I think it, I think it's like the best compliment you can get. And I look at all the people that I look up to in the industry and I'm like, I know they're good because I don't even think about how hard they're working. Like it just it feels so second nature to them. But like knowing just a little bit of the production stuff that I know now from podcasting, but also now as a producer on PA Live, it's like there is so much that goes into every minute of content. And the fact that like you don't even you don't see it's like all this invisible labor where you just show up and like you be yourself and people get to see that and just enjoy that without having to worry about the work that goes into it is yeah, a really cool yeah. thing. And I think Chris Bohinsky embodies that in such a cool way. I can't imagine learning from anyone else. I think it really was just so meant to be. And and it's fun. Like it's a lot of work, but it's fun work. And it's like, I could tell that he finds it so rewarding and it's just, it's a good thing to be, that's good energy to be around. Right. Cause this is my first, this is my first job. This is my first full-time job ever. I think it would be really easy in this industry to get jaded quickly and to, I don't know, just be like disheartened by everything. But I think he's someone who brings joy to his work every day. And that's always been something that I've wanted to do. So he's a good person to, you know, go ride the ride the roller coaster of this PA Live thing with. It's very cool. Yeah. So shout out Chris Bohinsky. Yes. If you made, I just wanted to make him work to actually listen to the episode. I couldn't yeah. jump yeah. out the gate with that. Right. Exactly. Because now like when, <laughs> when you tell him afterwards that we talked about him, then mm-hmm. now he has to actually listen. He's got to wait. Yeah. And, and then, and then you're going to be like, well, what did, what did we talk about? And then mm-hmm. you're going to quiz him. Exactly. You know what I mean? And make sure that he like where actually. Where to go to school. Yeah, what did sure, I like about Forno? Exactly. Make sure he actually <laughs> listened. Exactly. We have to do, we have to do this like two or three more times I was going to say, Joe, that's, that's Chris part one. We're going to get to Chris part two and three. Okay. So just. Yeah, good, good, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so a recent graduate, what'd you graduate? Yep. 2020? 2020. So what Pandemic. Was, yeah. So what was that experience like as a, as a college student in college graduating yeah. pandemic? Like, my yeah. God, I can't imagine what that was like. It was wild. I think it was easy to get into like, oh, life sucks. Like this is the worst possible scenario. And like, I think everybody in any stage of their life when the pandemic hit could say that. And it's valid. I think everyone's feelings of like, it's worse for me are valid and like whatever. But it did. It stung a little bit. It was spring break senior year 2020 when we like went home, you know, and I remember just bringing home my little backpack of like, I'm just gonna be back for two weeks. It's like an extended spring break. It's no biggie. And obviously that's not what happened. I think it was hard, but I also think it was a really beautiful opportunity to spend time with my family during a time where I normally wouldn't have been. My, all my sister, I have two sisters who I love so much and it like forced us to spend time with each other as adults. Cause I think that's also the thing that happens when you're like in your college years, right? Is like you separate from, if you have siblings or maybe even like high school friends or whatever, but you kind of go your separate ways. You become these new versions of yourselves. you become passionate about the career you want or whatever kind of whatever life path you're following, you like figure out a lot of that stuff in the college years or if it's not college, whatever those years are, like those coming of age times. And I always found it was really, really cool to get to come back and revisit all that like childhood stuff with people who've also like gone on their little journeys. Like I remember looking at my sisters and being like, my sisters are so smart and so like 
interesting and intelligent and like we think about the world in different ways but we have so much in common and like we have so much to learn from each other and I think that was like a real big silver lining of the pandemic with them being home because I was like wait a minute like we're all the same but we're different now like we've gone apart we've spread our wings we flew and now we're like coming back home in this weird bubble of like time isn't real but we're spending it together and it feels like childhood but it's also like we're we're better now you know what I mean like we've all kind of bettered ourselves and now we get to like enjoy those versions Something about like adult siblinghood is very interesting to me. And I feel like we really got to ruminate in it during the pandemic, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. What did you go to school for? And what did you think you were going to do after you graduated? Yeah, so I went into school as a communication major. And then quickly, just with the way the credits worked out, I realized that I could double major in English and communication. I never really wanted to like work with the English major I kind of just did it because I was like this is like a cool book club with people that are smarter than me and like that's kind of how (laughs) I treated it was like it forced me to like read the classics and analyze them in a way that I wouldn't on my own with really intelligent people so that's what the English major was kind of for and I always just like to read and write so that was just kind of like the fun side of it but I always knew I wanted to get involved somehow in the communication field I knew that I liked to like put stuff out into the universe whether it was like a blog post or whatever it was so I was like this is a good excuse to like learn the nuts and bolts of it and doing a lot of like communication theory and like what was it like before tv and like radio and how that changed the game and how like you know it just was cool to like track that progress and understand how the stuff I was making got out to people in the first place was like always fascinating with me but I think I it took me a long time to I think admit to myself and to other people that I wanted to be like a personality because I think at the end of the day that's what I want to be a media personality like I want people to know who I am like that's kind of it's like a weird vein thing that I've always kind of struggled with because I'm like how is that the goal but I think it's like I don't know it gives you the platform to entertain and spark joy and I think that's like what it boils down to for me but I just bring that up to say it took me a long time to get there and I think I was like I need to have like a worthy pursuit like I should be a lawyer or I should like do something that matters but I'm like this matters it's just in a different way so I think a big turning point for me was like admitting to myself that this is like a worthy field to pursue and then once I did that I was like okay like it you know what I mean and I feel like until I got the PA PA live job it was still kind of hard to admit to myself and I was spending all the time on the podcast and I was like what is it all for like it was hard why am I doing this you know what I mean like all the time and I'm like oh my gosh like nobody's listening and like nobody cares (laughs) nobody cares yeah but it's just like I don't know it in hindsight I'm like see there was a reason but I think like I yeah it, it was nice to kind of have that realization a bunch of little times because I think that's what got me through the times when like nobody cared what I was saying because I just said <laughs> yeah. it anyway. And yeah. I think it was like a good test for myself. Like just keep trucking, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, you do a lot of content creation. Yeah. I mean, you've done some other things too. I mean, you can talk about them a little bit, but mm-hmm. you know, how did, how did you kind of figure all this stuff out? Like, did you have anyone that helped you? Did you just figure it out on the fly as you, as you went? A lot of it was on the fly. I think to go back to Fordham, I took an accidental, it wasn't an accident. I took a sports class. I needed at one communications elective my I think it was my junior year and I thought okay like I was looking at the schedule I was like what would fit in my schedule and there was this one class called sports communication in the field professor John Cirillo and I remember looking at it, and I'm like I don't care about sports at all like I couldn't care less but I literally thought I was like maybe I'll meet a boy I'm like maybe I'll find a husband in this sports house <laughs> like genuinely I was like half kidding when I said that but I was like no that was definitely like a real thought because it was like I'm smart like everyone's gonna want to work with me on projects like I feel <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. this could be an entry point in to like find a handsome preppy Fordham boy to call my own. So that's kind of why I took the class. It just worked in my schedule and I needed the one elective. So I was like, check, check, check. I'll take the class. I quickly found that like no one, <laughs> everyone could tell that I was like a fake fan. Like I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, like, people you're a could, fake sports person. People could tell that like they were all going around. And I think one of like the intro questions was like, tell me your favorite moment in sports history. And I looked around. I was like, does everyone just have one? Like, does everyone just have a favorite moment? In, what are you talking about? Like what? And everyone so what knew. did you do? Google it. I don't even know what I, I think I blacked out. <laughs> I, blacked I have no out. idea. Haven't, yeah. I don't even know. I was just like, one time when I joined the cross country team, it was like a personal history for me. I don't even know. I don't know. I yeah. blacked out. But from that moment, everybody knew that I was not a sporty girl like I claimed to be. And like, no, it was like, I remember finding out that there was a, a group chat with everyone in the class, but I wasn't in it. Oh, so no. Sad. I was like, they know, they know I'm a fake. Yeah. But I and, bring Anna Delvey over here. Literally. Is I that just, her name? 
I, <laughs> should I do the accent? Yeah, 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 yeah. Please do the accent. I literally don't think I know where's the money. Is that the <laughs> I don't know. I can't do it either. But uh, bank fuck up. I wired yeah. the yeah. money. Yeah, I can't. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> Stop. So, anyway, the point is that turned out to be the class that like I really do think set the stage for my professional future. Not because I want to be in sports, which. I sort of ended up in sports, which is a whole other yeah, thing. Yeah, so is this kind of like where, where it led to? A little bit, but it's also all kind of on accident. So the point of the sports class is that I met this professor who, you know, had a really great network of Fordham alumni who were working in sports, but, you know, greater pop culture industries and communication industries. So I met a lot of PR guys. Again, I thought I wanted to go into PR. So I remember working events, like volunteering calling it like freelance work that's not what freelance means but that's what I put on my resume I was like well, I'm a freelance PR girl I'm like no I didn't I like worked one table at like a, an event but at that event I can't even think of what it was to be honest with you but he I, I met all these Fordham guys and kind of just traded business cards and I eventually that's what got me on the press list for a lot of the people I went on to um, interview on my podcast because I just kind of stayed in touch with these guys and I was like I was like my line was like I want to be Kelly Ripa I want to interview all the people I can if that's sports people, so be it. So like a lot of the beginning of the podcast too, where I started to get like actual interviews with actual people that I had to like go through agents to get happened because I took this sports class and because I was just trying to like, I didn't have an internship and I was like, I need to have something to like show that I'm working. And so I don't know, one thing led to another. And then even throughout quarantine, when I was like in the heat of the pandemic, but also the production of the show where it was super regular episodes every Sunday, every now and again, I would have like, an Olympian or like some rugby guy, you know what I mean? Who like was a, p- a big deal. I don't mean to like undercut it, but like to me, I didn't know who they were, but I would just do my research <laughs> yeah, on the back yeah, end. You're a fake sports person. I was a fake sports person, but I think <laughs> listening to it, you wouldn't know that I'd be like, Oh my God, I'm here with so-and-so. Yeah. Obviously, you know this and I like give the little rundown, whatever. But I just like, I'm so glad that I ended up taking that. I'm so glad I was a boy, crazy college student because if I wasn't, I don't think I would have taken a sports class. And I, ju- I don't know what would have happened because I think the podcast, I would have had a harder time authenticating the work that I was doing because I think say what you want like having interviews with people with like a blue check on Instagram makes it feel more real and I think that was like another turning point for me of like I don't know who this person is but like somebody else might and I started seeing other people listening that I'm like wait a minute like it's starting to catch on like it's cool and I can kind of hold my own when it's a press day where like an athlete's doing 10 interviews like I get to be one of them and like they don't know that it's a small thing like I just have to pretend like I'm really good at it and like I got good at it. So I'm just happy that I took the sports class because that's how I met all those people. And it was like this weird ripple effect where it like made me feel a lot more like validated in the work I was doing. So sports class. You felt legit. I felt legit. So how do I get on? How do I go take this sports class and get on this media list? (laughs) No, That's what I need to do. Honestly. And then it literally happened just the other day. My professor emailed me and he was like, hey, how's the podcast going? Like literally last week, he emailed me, how's the podcast going? Like you're still doing it. I have this guy who's doing a nonprofit baseball camp thing who used to be in the MLB. Do you want it? And I was like, boy, do I have news for you? Like (laughs) uh, not only do I want it, but I'll take it for FIA Live. Like I can get you on a real show now. And he was like, are you kidding? And I was like, no. First of all, you missed my LinkedIn post, apparently. Like, thanks for keeping <laughs> yeah, up, Yeah, you're really, pay, you're really paying attention, right? prof. <laughs> but yeah. I, it was a cool moment to, like, get to write that email. Like, as a matter of fact, I can offer you, like, a, do you have so, a budget? Yeah. Do you have a media budget? I said. And he was like, where are you? Like, <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> this is, like, a real thing now. Literally. So it was it, that was cool, too, to be on the other end of it, where now the guys are like, it's not just for this random podcast. Like, it's for a TV show. Like, so a, cool. real, a real thing. So cool. Where before it was just kind of, like, half real, mm-hmm. you know? Right, because it wasn't like, right, it wasn't nothing, but it also was like if it went really bad or my microphone wasn't plugged in, which happened, <laughs> yeah. nobody really cared. Yeah. <laughs> and now people would care, yeah. which is yeah, it's kind, of, kind, of, kind of important now. A level of success now, like if your microphone's unplugged, people would notice. Yes, definitely. That's I think cool. the viewers of PA Live would be like, we can't hear Rachel. And that is cool because no one used to care. <laughs> <laughs> now people care. Now people would know. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, all right. So, so tell me a little bit more about the, the, the sports. I mean, you do uh, in mm-hmm. arena hosting. Yes, I do. All right. So tell me about how, how did that come about? So that interestingly, honestly, had nothing to do with my sporty college experience in sports communication. That kind of happened because I, again, pandemic, I remember auditioning. Well, I found like an old application for the Rail Riders. Because I remember going to a game like in when I was in college with my dad and like looking at the guy who was doing it. And I'm like, wait a minute, I feel like I could do that. I feel like that would be really fun. Like, so it was always just kind of in the back of my mind is like, hey, this whole like 
in arena in stadium hosting thing could be a good gig but it kind of you know sidebar the pandemic happened there wasn't games I was it wasn't top of mind then I would say like in the in the winter of I guess 2021 um like December January of 2020 2021 I started thinking I'm like maybe there's gonna be a season again like things started to look a little hopeful and I was like okay let me like revisit this rail riders thing and I googled my little heart away and I found like a very old application from like 2013 or something crazy of like we're looking for a new MC like do you think you could be it email this person with all this stuff I like filled out the old form and made a video you had to make like a an audition tape I guess of you like doing a game explaining the game to the contestant and like presenting it you know kind of coming up with the game itself too so I did this like I, I did a fake contest called TikTok or Tick Not and I came up with all these like TikTok trends, half of them were real and half of them were like totally made up. And I had my dad stand with me in my childhood bedroom. And I was like, I'm here with Rick <laughs> of Shavertown and we're going to see if he knows the TikTok trends. And I did the whole thing and I had, I used like my unplugged um, podcast mic to like pretend I was talking to a real mic. I shot it on my iPhone with my ring light that I got for Christmas. Like this it was a whole great. Yeah, it's, it was like a real production. production. Listen, but it was a production nonetheless. Yeah. You know, like it was, we threw it together and my dad played the part he put on the rail riders had he, was the he, had, fan. Like, he went for it and he we, you know I didn't give him the answers ahead of time we did the whole video whatever and I sent it in I heard nothing back like it turns out this address didn't exist like the what oh, I don't no. even think like I don't even know where it went and I honestly forgot about it because I was like I don't even know if they're hiring I don't know I didn't know at that point if they were having a season I was just kind of like shot in the dark let me do this thing sort of for fun that's my content creation of the day I made this funny video I like posted it on my finsta my friends were like what are you doing like get a job you know so <laughs> get a job literally. so I was like I'm trying that's the point yeah. so anyway that's what the point of that video was literally yeah. so then a couple months later it's getting warmer I'm thinking like someone mentioned a baseball game and I was like wait a minute I never heard anything from the rail riders like I wonder if there's something else I could do so I just like went on the rail riders Instagram I found like the general like info at swrailriders.com and I forwarded the email that I sent to like someone who probably retired a decade ago and <laughs> I resent it and I just said like hey I know this is, at this point it's May at this point you know the season's about to start it was a late start because of the pandemic and I said listen I don't know if this is already settled but like if there's any way I can get to do this for like a game or two that would be so cool like anything I can help I would love to get the chance to MC for you like here's my audition let me know and I'm not kidding that night Justin Guthrie got back to me he was the director of fun and games he had just started like a week before and he was kind of going through emails and he was like literally I'm not kidding we have our orientation tomorrow can you make it and I was like of course I can make it so I made it and I did the whole orientation and I we hit the ground running the next week we started up with games and I just loved it I think it was so fun I worked with a lot of other there was I think four of us at one point there were like three main MCs for that season so like we kind of got to work on a rotation I think I learned a lot it was all of our first time like we I think we were all kind of learning from each other I joked me and Kellen the one girl who's become such a dear friend of mine like people thought we were the same person because we pretty much looked the same <laughs> so we were like oh who's that blonde girl and it's like it's either Rachel or Kellen people think we're the same but she was so good at what she did and again someone who made it look so easy and just she was so energetic and likable and I just like looked at her and I was like I could I could do that too and I think it was cool to get to learn from her on the fly like together because we'd be like hosting a game together in some cases which was really fun and then to see that she became a really close friend was fun um but I, it was it was cool to track my own progress and I think it was fun to challenge myself and I would study like hosting reels that I found on YouTube all the time of the girls who did it for baseball for basketball for hockey like I just would find anyone I could who I could like look up to and I found like once you get big you don't have to post your hosting reels on YouTube so it's like a lot of these <laughs> yeah. girls who are reels from like I don't know the early 2010s and I'm just like look watching them over and over to be like oh that would be a good way to segue and blah 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 like I don't know I just I worked really hard to get as good as I could at it because I really enjoyed it I was like I get to do this every day and like someone's paying me money to talk on a microphone like that's been the goal for a really long time and it happened so spur of the moment randomly like if I emailed him the next day I would have missed it you know so it felt really special and I felt really happy to be there and everyone was so we just had a really good team. They're called the Pinstripe Patrol. Is like all the interns that work there. They were also wonderful. And we just had the best summer. That was last summer. And it was incredible. And But I think still at that point, I was like, okay, this is like a fun gig. I didn't have a job. I was like, this is... So this was just like a part-time summer. Part-time, right. Like literally just, the most seasonal. Like if we were away that week, I didn't get a check that week. You know what I mean? It was just like so random. Okay, just like yeah. piecing together side gig thing. Meanwhile, I'm still looking for jobs in New York. I'm still like, maybe I should go into PR. Like maybe I, I just like this whole crisis of like, what am I doing? You know? Yeah. But understanding that I really enjoyed the work I was doing at the Rail Riders. And I was like, it, 
it's fun. Like it's as fun as I thought it would be. And I think that's also a fear too, right? It's like yeah. you finally get a gig that you've always wanted. And it's then like, you what hate if it, it. sucks? Yeah. Like that would be so sad and I think disheartening. So the fact that that didn't happen and I felt so energized going to work every day and I left that stadium feeling like electric and I'm like people and then people started to give me feedback and it felt so good. And like obviously it comes with ne- like negative feedback too, which has taken time to like, you know, not let it get to me as much. I think there's a lot to learn. Obviously I'm fresh. I'm not going to be as good as I can be the first season, but overwhelmingly positive feedback everyone was really welcoming I think people liked that I was from the area you know what I mean because a lot of people came from college and they were just like at Misericordia for the summer because they did a class over the summer and like they're not from here so we would have like sponsors like coast or something like coast tyrant auto and people would say cost and I'm like what it's coast tyrant auto like what do you mean like <laughs> yeah and I'll like the more like guys in I was like of course I know guys in I'm a local girl like just like knew how to pronounce the names of sponsors and I feel like people that like sort of in a weird way resonated with people of like she gets it. She's from here. Like she's, I've been to Red Barons games growing up always. So it was this cool kind of mix of like hometown girl doing the thing that she loves. And it was like a cool full circle thing. But I will say like all the while I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to make this season. The second I get a job in New York, I'm out of here. Like, I don't know how long I'm going to stick around. And then that's what led me to hockey because all of a sudden people are talking about hockey season. They said, well, you're going to do the penguins. And I was like, wish I could, but I'm going to live in New York. Like, so I, I blew it off over and over and over again. So you had plans like, to just leave. I like thought like, even if ah. I don't get a job, I'm just going to move because I, I needed like a change. I needed to be able to like, I don't know, job searching on my own for like the jobs I was looking for. I wasn't doing anything. I was like, I need a major shakeup. I got to like do something else. And so I was just like, oh, no, sorry, penguins. Like, you'll find someone great. Happy for you. It sure would be fun, but I'm not going to be in the area. Like, I'll do the best I can. And then slowly but surely the summer went on and I was like, it's not that realistic that I'm going to be in New York. So I agreed to do half the season for the penguins. I said I'd sign on from October through December. But by January 1st, I am moving. Like, I just kept (laughs) believing that that would happen. Um, But then you flash forward to late December in 2021. And that's when the PA Live thing happened. And then I was like, that's the shakeup. Like, that's what I needed. I just needed like a full time job. And it led me perfectly to it. I don't know. So one thing kind of just led to the next. Truly. Like, I think the second I sent that audition tape for the rail riders, like everything else really did fall into place. Because I also think the thing about people always say, because it's the same job, right? Penguins and rail riders. It's the same job description. I have the same job. Um, I was qualified for the penguins because I did a good rookie season at the rail riders. Like, I felt like I could do it. But it's a very different environment. I think like anyone who knows, I'm not a sporty girl, (laughs) but what I can tell you that baseball and hockey are super different. Just like the energy of each game is super different. I mean, baseball is like a slow, relaxing summertime thing. And hockey's like in your face and there's light shows and like loud music. And everyone's like just a lot more. It's just like next level. I really think everything about it was like up a notch. And I think if I started at the Penguins, I would have been like, shell shocked I think I would have been intimidated there's like a light on the camera at the penguins we didn't have a light it was all daylight like we didn't have a special light so I remember feeling like it's so bright and everyone's looking at me and I'm the only girl and I'm on center ice and that's the other thing I told you um rail riders we had a couple MCs and we would always split the games like I would have you know if I did middle first inning intermission game not intermission but if I did like the first game of the first inning Kellen would do you know, the next one. And we would kind of flip off. So you never had a whole game to yourself. And then all of a sudden I'm at hockey where it's like everyone's screaming and everyone's rowdy and everyone's excited to be there. Not that they are not excited to be there for the rail riders. It's just the energy is different different. of the stadium versus the arena. And I remember that first night just being like, Oh my God, like it's real deal. And then it was cool because people knew me, people knew me from rail riders and they were like, wait, you're the rail riders girl. And now you're here. And I was like, you know my face. And they're like, what's more your voice, but I'm like, either way, like now you got a following. So cool. So I think like that kind of, led and it gave me the confidence I needed because like I said if I went straight into hockey I think I would have been very intimidated very overwhelmed but I think doing the rail riders first I was like I was ready for it and I was like almost craving it I was like I don't want to split the games anymore like I want to have the games to myself and I want to do everything and I want to be the penguins girl now people call me the penguins girl which is like a little annoying but I take it because it's honestly (laughs) I'm proud of it and I wouldn't have been able to do that without the rail riders and then that's you know I think it helps a lot that the sponsorships between the penguins and WBRE is a thing because then when that job position opened up, I was just a little networking like, hey, I applied for this job at WBRE and I feel like I do well at it. And everyone I, think was like, I think I'm qualified. Everyone was like, I feel like you'd be good at that too. And I'd be like, maybe start spreading that around a little bit. Like maybe <laughs> throw that out there. And not to say that's the only reason. I think it helped. I think it just being with the Penguins, I think, gave me the confidence I needed for PA Live in the same way that being with the Rail Riders gave me the confidence I needed for the Penguins. So it really was a nice 
progression and I kind of developed the skill set as I went and that's why I'm able to do what I do now which is cool yeah so earlier you mentioned like uh, constructive criticism mm-hmm. or negative feedback I mean were there were there times that you got discouraged or you know dealt with negative comments and how did how did you deal with that I think I think I was always anticipating it because I think I always knew once I started to like feel seriously about the work that I wanted to do and that like I want to be like I said before I want to be in the public eye I want to be a media personality like that's just that's with it that's you that's what you're signing up for so I think always in the back of my mind I was like people are one day gonna be mean to me <laughs> and I have to just be ready for <laughs> it and have the haters but I never had that before because again like no one listened to the podcast if they were a hater of the podcast they weren't listening to the podcast so I never had to deal with any feedback it was just kind of like or it was like hey your microphone's unplugged and I was like that's <laughs> yeah, you're so- you sound like you're you know yelling in a tunnel it literally was unplugged <laughs> like I deserve that criticism you know yeah. um but I'm trying I'm trying to think if there's like a specific time I think I also think the rail riders had a series of very good MCs and I think a lot of it people missed the the guys that were there and it was just kind of a big shoes to fill moment but I also think that gave me the space I needed to like grow into the role because it's like I everyone knew that I wasn't going to be his level the second I got there so it kind of gave me like this grace period to learn the job a little bit and to get used to it and to know the the people I was working with and just kind of settle in so I think that always helped but I think that was the main critique was always comparison of like you do this so differently than a different person or a person at the Iron Pig Stadium. Like you do things differently. And I'm like, I didn't know there was a different way to do it. I don't know. Again, I'm not a sports person. Like I wasn't going yeah. to a million games all the time where I was like actively looking. You know what I mean? So I think that was a big part of it. I do think, again, in the same way that it leveled up from rail riders to hockey, um, I think like the criticism came a little bit more. And I'm trying to like build my socials and I'll like get an occasional message of like, I don't know, just like a little mean hatery message and I think it does get to me I think I don't know but I I almost it is kind of like an authenticating thing of like someone took the time to find me which like regardless of what they're gonna say I feel like that's cool like I was able to be found just because of the job that I have like if you'd like look up Rachel Penguins hockey like I pop up and I'm like that's sort of a win because at least I have enough yeah what do they call you like the collect, Penguins, the penguins, girl. penguins sometimes girl sometimes Penguins chick Penguins okay it depends how like sassy I'm feeling I don't know I don't know what the <laughs> yeah. distinction between Penguins yeah. girl and Penguins chick is yeah. but um yeah so I feel like it almost I just try to remind myself that like one you expected this and two it's like people I don't know like people are going out of their way to find you like you're findable I don't know it's hard to like talk about any of this without feeling kind of vain but I think at the end of the day like I want people to know me so did you develop like a thicker skin from from, I think I'm trying I think it's still like gonna happen and I think again progression PA live has opened up the doors to like a whole different audience and I do think I have like young energy because I am young and like I speak quickly and I'm kind of in your face and that's that's kind of what you're signing up for I was like that's kind of how I pitched myself to the show I was like I like to think that I can shake it up a little bit and like have fun with it but I think people get used to how things are done and I don't know I think there's been a little bit of that's been harder I think Rail Riders was doable criticism wise hockey was doable this is still doable it's just like more of it because there's a bigger audience and, right yeah on another level that, exactly so I feel like I'm leveled up so like everything gets leveled up I'm prouder of the work I'm doing now because it's leveled up but I'm also like had to deal with more criticism but again all of it is helpful in some way you know and like some of it is things I know like I know I speak quickly <laughs> I know I talk fast <laughs> I gotta work on that I don't know like I get that that's I have to hone that and like become a little bit more confident, more comfortable, but some of that's just going to come with time. So I'm trying to give myself grace too, because I'm, I'm, I've been there for two months. Like I'm literally two months into the job. Like yeah. I'm, I'm fresh. Yeah. So I feel like there's a lot to learn, but the beautiful thing about PA live is that we're on the air every day. So. And it's live. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so what it was that experience like? So like you said, like going yeah. from, you know, you're, you're doing in-person stuff, you know, yep. with groups of people, whatever. Now you're like live TV. Yeah. It's cool. And I think that was another like learning curve to PA live because the only like, you know, emceeing is live, but you're just like live with an audience. So you're feeding off of that energy and you have to match that energy because that's the job, right? Like you need to be able to throw it all out there and make it seem like this is the most fun thing you could be doing on your Friday night because it is. We're here together and we're cheering on the penguins and like that's so fun and people buy into it because they're feeling it and you're just kind of matching that energy. At PA live, you you set the energy, right? You don't match the energy. So I feel like I started coming in hot. Like I would just be like, 
hey guys, we're here on PLM. And everyone would be like, you're not in an arena. Like you don't need to capture like a room. It's a, it's a camera. It's different. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think yeah. it's, it was a yeah. hard thing yeah, to it's be a, like. It's a different audience because like you don't have the audience exactly. in front of you. You're, you're, you're literally talking into a camera. That's the thing. So they're like, it reads weird because you're just like screaming at me. <laughs> <laughs> you're sc- screaming at the viewers. And I'm like, I don't get it because they love when I scream at the penguins. Like that's, they're like, scream more, do more of that yeah. screaming What things. am I doing wrong here? Exactly. So I was like, wait, I thought I was supposed to be applying the things that I learned in the last gig to make me better at the next gig. And they're like, but it's a different gig, Rach. So it's Chris Chris Bohinsky over there muting your microphone. He's literally like, turn her so down. Th- this is, pa- this is part two. <laughs> this is part two for Chris. Hey, Chris. Glad yeah. you made it. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he's still watching. I, I hope so. He better be. Chris. Throw out like another random fact that hopefully he'll he'll remember. Do you know any good facts? Well, um, how about this? Well, Ooh. well, I mean, you're, I know you already know this, but okay. just you know, in case anyone that's listening or watching wants to learn more about Chris, Chris, uh, you know, as you know, was on this show what? like way back in the day, episode twenty nine. Way back, like that was like OG on the stacks. Days. I was scrolling to find it, and I was like. My yeah, scrolling a long, long time. I was like, was he on this? I was like, did they lie to me? Like, was, <laughs> was that a joke? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So episode episode 29. So here's there another little fact that we can okay. quiz Chris with to make sure there he made go. it through this whole episode. There you go. Chris number so, two. We promised it would happen. So episode 20. I feel like I have to have him back now that we're on video. There you go. Yeah. What do you think? I think so too. Yeah. I think so too. Definitely. And have it just be a recap of this episode. So be like, have a quiz. <laughs> yes. An hour long <laughs> quiz. What did Rachel say about the progression and the constructive <laughs> criticism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what is it about about content creation that that you enjoy so much? I think it just makes me feel really proud to get to put something into the universe and for like maybe people to catch on because I think that's also just in general a cool thing about the internet is that anybody can find it, which like is scary and weird in some ways, but right. it's also really cool because it's like I, I there was this one young woman who found our Instagram page for the for the podcast we called it a blog cast because it started as a blog so it was like the her life blog cast but whatever and she found <laughs> it and like for whatever reason we just resonated with her on such a deep level and she would message me after you know specific episodes always when we did like dating I love to talk about like dating and relationships and so it was always fun when we got to do those kind of episodes and every single time we did one without fail I would get a message like this made me feel so good or this made me feel validated and I appreciate that you're like putting these out and that was just like the only person I knew or should I say didn't know the only person that I didn't know who was actually listening because everyone else was like my sister or like my mom and I'm like I appreciate it or like (laughs) your biggest fans exactly exactly which is nice and I love their support and it means a lot to me but it was so cool to have someone who I'm like I couldn't even tell you where she lives I like I know her Instagram handle I'm not even sure that I know her name but it always made me feel so good because I was like whatever we did whatever hashtags we used it ended up in the person's hands who I wanted it to be it was in her feed and she found it you know what I mean and then she she followed along and then when I got the PA live job she sent me like the most beautiful message I'm like I'm so proud of and it just felt so good and I was like this is why like that's why you put out the episode even though you didn't feel like editing it that week and you just made sure you hit the deadline because you never know like which episode is going to click or which Instagram reel from the episode is going to click with the right person and I think that's also part of building a brand which has been an interesting journey to be on like all of that only exists because of the internet like you know I'm only able to try to reach out and like be able to have a career I always thought like New York City is where I need to be in order to make a career happen. And that's like literally not true. I could be anywhere. And the people who I want to see in New York can still see it. You know what I mean? And hear me and see me on TV now. PAHomepage.com. So it's it's cool that that's been a... I don't know. Just the the fact that people that I don't know can could find it was always like an interesting little keep going. Like you never know who's going to hear this episode and be like blown away, you know? Yeah, you never yeah. know. Like I mean, even with like same thing with my show, it's just like the amount of like people that I've met just through social media, just mm-hmm. Instagram, mm-hmm. LinkedIn, like everywhere. Like I I had people like I forget oh my god, it was like a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. People from like I had some guy from Australia message me. See? It's like, and I, and I couldn't even tell you his name. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but he messaged me about an episode and, and like he listens because I can tell by his message. Yeah. And it was just like, what the heck? It's a weird trippy thing, which again is like, wait, people are like, people could see what I'm doing. Like, I'm not just like throwing it into the <laughs> void, which is how it felt. And yeah. like 
felt for a long time. And I think while that was mostly true, it's not all the way true, which was that that little twinge of hope that I was like, see, it's for a reason. Like, and again, I just, I think I felt so proud of myself every time I got an episode out, especially on the weeks where I didn't feel like it or I had a lot going on. I had like a whole week of baseball and I like somehow figured out a way to get an episode of the Her Life Blogcast that 15 people are going to listen to <laughs> max. Yeah. And I did it. And I feel like, again, that really set a tone for for the content creation and being super regimented with it, but also just like enjoying the process of building a brand for myself because that's like what this career is. Like it doesn't, you know what I mean? I can't be a personality if I don't broadcast that personality in every single way that I possibly can. So it was almost like a good excuse to be obnoxious on Instagram a lot of the time. Really. <laughs> yeah, loud and in people's faces. You know what I mean? exactly, exactly. Talking fast. You're screaming and talking loud. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I, I kind of like this 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 topic, this discussion, because I have a lot of other podcast hosts mm-hmm. and just other content creators that, you know, listen, watch my show or whatever. Mm-hmm. So but like, you know, like what tips maybe would you have to, you know, like you said, to help build that brand? Yeah, I think you just I think I was really um, conscious of trying to like find my niche for a really long time. And I think the niche is like being yourself, which is the cheesiest sentence I've ever said in my life. Like you've been hearing it is annoying. But I think I was always like, OK, what do I focus on I I teased it to you before there's there was this mo um a period of my pandemic life where I focused so much time on making brackets on Instagram which I called hotness brackets it all started with the Zach Brack which was a bracket like literally March Madness style bracket that I made of all Zach Efron movies but like specifically his character within each movie and I was just like Instagram we have to decide which is the hottest Zach Efron role like which role is he the most dreamy in and we're swooning for him and I had people vote and then it turned into this thing where like we would do one round of voting and then I would like provide my commentary on each round and I'd be like Link Larkin of Harry spray beat out high school musical three by a hair here's why i think it happened and it became this like big breakdown of like i don't even know like nonsense it really truly was but people were like eating it up because it was the middle of the pandemic and no one had anything to do but it was like we're tuning into the bracket tonight to see what rachel has to say about charlie st cloud you know so that kind of is a good example of me being like let's see if this catches on. Let's see if this is my brand. Cause it was like a very conscious thing, which I'm always like embarrassed to admit that I would like did the Zach Brack, not for the love of Zach Efron, but because I thought maybe <laughs> it would like go viral or like make people follow me. But like it sort of, it did. I didn't go viral at all, but like some people reposted. I saw like an influx of followers and I was like, wait a minute. People yeah, like this. People kind of, yeah. People are There's like a contest resonating like with this like form of ranking the hotness of men, which is objectifying and wrong, but like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. We could get into that. That's another episode. <laughs> yeah. When Chris comes on, we'll do a two parter. There with, we go. You know what I mean? And we'll yes. like talk about the morals or whatever of yeah. objectifying Zac Efron. But <laughs> that became a whole separate thing where I would do these brackets all the time, and that was like, okay, maybe this is my niche. Maybe this is what I'm doing. And I think I not wasted time because I I loved the brackets. Like the Zac Brack is my heart and soul, and I love doing them. And I did like probably a dozen of them over the year, over the months. It was really fun, but. I think I really was trying to find that one thing that like was my thing. And I don't think I needed to. I think I could have just been like put out whatever is interesting to you. Because again, the cool thing about creating so much stuff, whether it's a weekly podcast or just like Instagram stories, is you never know what that one thing is that's going to like pique someone's interest and make them interested in you or like get them to want to follow along. So I almost feel like more is more. Like the more stuff you throw, like see what sticks. That's kind of been my approach recently. And that was kind of the whole point of the podcast was it was about nothing but it was about everything and that's what made it cool because you never knew if I just had a dating and relationships podcast that's a very specific audience but if I sometimes have athletes on it and then I sometimes have like these weird introspective conversations with my friend from college it's like there's literally a little something for everyone and there's episodes that I could point to for any job I'm applying to you know what I mean depending I've like built a resume for myself from this one show so Which is against the advice that I got a lot. A lot of people said you have to find your thing, find your audience. And I was like, the point is I want my audience to be everyone. Like that was (laughs) always the thing. I was like, I want as many people to know me and to care about what I say as possible. So I always thought like logically I have to talk about as many things as I can. Like, I don't know. I think it gets into that like, what is it all? Jack of all trades, master of none. Like, I think it's a little bit in that, but like, I'm not trying to be a sports expert. I'm trying to be an interesting person to listen to. Like, that's what I want to be. I want people to... Not even like find what I say, I don't know, anything special. It's just interesting. Like I want people to be like, I wonder what Rachel thinks about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. Like I would love for people to ask me my opinion on that. What's your opinion on that? I'm happy to say that people have asked and you're not the first one. I think it was, I think it was real. First of all, a lot of people don't know if it was like a PR thing. No, it was real. I think it was so real. 
I think it was so weird to watch him accept the Oscar right after that. I do think my main takeaway genuinely is that Chris Rock is a class act. He handled that with an amount of composure that I genuinely cannot comprehend. Like watching it back, the way he just like, it couldn't have been handled better. And he would have had every excuse to handle it really poorly. And I don't think anyone could have said anything bad. But the fact that he was so cool. Good for Chris Rock. I'm, a, I'm more of a Chris Rock fan than I was before. It's like it's like the <laughs> yeah, Kanye yeah. Taylor thing when like everyone like Kanye VMA Taylor. Yep. And everyone's like, we just like Taylor Swift more now. And like, that's kind of how I feel about Chris Rock in this moment. I was like, it didn't work, dude. Like, you yeah. don't look bad. He looks good. So <laughs> yeah. you gave him a great opportunity to shine, you know? Yeah. And boy, did he handle that well. He just did. He really did. I mean, so well that I that I, I feel like it almost it almost looks fake. I think that's why people I, I think, think it's fake because he handled it so well. It was like, right. Like he, and how do you like, I mean, and you, I think you and I know better than anyone. Like I'm not on live TV that you are, but like imagine getting slapped in the face on people. Like, slapped <laughs> yeah. in the like, face. like legitimately attacked. L- literally assaulted. Yeah. yeah. He didn't file a police report. I don't know if I, would you have, if you're Chris Rock, are you filing a police report? I don't think so. I probably wouldn't either. It would be a whole thing. I think again, yeah. he's cool for not like, yeah. but I think if the roles yeah. were reversed, Will Smith would have filed a police report. I think report. you're right. See? I think he would have been a big baby. Yep. And Chris Rock is the coolest person on earth now. I really think that he is. Dead. He, he had is. to take a slap to get there, but <laughs> it took his whole it took his whole lifetime and being slapped by Will Smith at the Oscars to be cool. And there he he solidified hey, it. He worked up to it. He absolutely did. He absolutely he's, did. He's now worthy. Yes. <laughs> All right. So so tell me. You know you've been you've been at PA Live now for a couple of months. How yep. how's it, how's it going? Besides the yelling into the right. camera, I think that I've started slowly but surely to talk a little slower. I think that I've calmed down a little bit, which is good. I think I had a lot of um, excited energy going into the job. But again, I'm trying to give myself grace. Like, I think that's normal. It was, it's my first job. I think also I feel so, so incredibly grateful that this is my first real job because I thought it would take me so long to get on a consistent on air thing. I was like, OK, five year plan. Once I get in the door at anywhere, it's going to take me a long time to like, you know, build up and like get to the point where they put me on the air at all, let alone on any regular basis. Um, And I think something that I'm sort of maybe trying to convince myself of is like, I did do that work. It just wasn't in that um, like way I would have thought. Like I thought I would get in at a station doing like being a production assistant or something and like slowly trying to be like, no, I could do that. Like, oh, let me prove it to you. Let me do a segment here. Let me do a segment there. And like, that's what I thought would be my entry point in. But I think it took me a long time to realize that like the podcast work was real work. And like the the Instagram brackets were work. Like I was proving to myself and to other people that I could be entertaining. And I don't know. I think I'd like, it took me a long time to admit that, but I, so I almost like imposter syndrome is the thing I think we talk about a lot. And it definitely crept up on me as this job opportunity came up. Cause I was like, okay, I knew as I was applying, I was like, I'm perfect for this. I'm from the area. I know that I could do this job really, really well. And I know that I could have fun doing it every day. I know I could work with Chris well. Like I knew that it was kind of falling into place. But then there was that voice in the back of my head that's like, you didn't earn it yet. You know what I mean? Like this is too good a gig to get your first job. And like part of me still thinks that. I think it, it, I feel so lucky that it worked out in the way that it did and that they wanted me. I was like, that's so cool. Um, And I think I wasn't, expecting it like I think even as I applied and auditioned and interviewed I was like okay they're gonna like realize that I'm not like I'm not an adult yet they don't know you know what I mean like they don't know that I didn't earn this but then I'm like I look back on the body of work that I created and it was almost like I did it you know what I mean like I I kind of created the opportunities for myself um and even though nobody listened to them nobody knew that that's another thing to go back to tips for podcasters I think you have to pretend like everyone's listening and you have to like convince yourself that other people don't know like I think a lot of people if you stumbled onto the show you would assume especially by the point I put out 90 episodes like something's working she wouldn't be doing it for nothing but no I was doing it for nothing nobody like I it wasn't for anything but just because I kept doing it like people assumed that it was a lot more successful than it was so like that's a true fake it till you make it moment that like worked for me so yeah. I'm like I just being myself, consistent. That's the thing. So it's like that authenticates a body of work, the consistency of it, like more than not more than, but maybe equal to audience. You know what I mean? In numbers, like the numbers of the amount of content you're creating are significant as well. It's not just the listenership. And I think that's something that I'm glad I believed, even if I didn't totally believe I like just kept trying to convince myself of it. I'm so glad I did because I think that's how I got here. Yeah, totally. And, and and you've stayed humble, 
but yet hungry. And I, 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 I can, I can see that, you know, yeah. in, in your, in your work and in your, you. in your progression. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important for like, like you said, like, or I mean, for any content creator mm-hmm. to be, to be humble enough to, to have, I, I guess, to have that imposter syndrome, like mm-hmm. you feel like you didn't make it, but yet you're, you're doing it. Yeah. But also staying hungry enough to, you know, know that like, Hey, I'm young here. Like I'm, I'm the I'm the new girl on the show. Exactly. You know. Exactly, and like I'm very aware that I have so much to learn from everyone around especially me. Especially Chris. Especially Chris. Chris, number three. Mm. <laughs> See, so I do. I have a lot to learn, and I feel like I'm in a really good spot where I'm receptive to all of that. And I do, I do, I feel hungry for it, and I feel really lucky to be there. And it's just like this weird balance of like, and every day I wake up and I'm like, I could. Do- I remember when I did my first episode, like my screen test for PA live like and your I, first like real one it was my first like I didn't even know it was gonna be they ended up airing it which I was like this is a good sign they're putting it on the show they wouldn't do that if they hated me you know so I went in and I, I taped a, a cooking segment we made soda can cupcakes where you like literally I don't know if you know this you do a box cake mix any box cake mix and a can of soda and it literally bakes up like a normal cupcake it's the weirdest thing but that was my segment Chris prepared it all but we like framed in this way like Rachel you have a recipe what is it and I was like let me introduce you to this thing I created <laughs> all by myself like I, yeah. I had no idea where I came from but anyway I just remember waking up that morning and being like, I get to go and do a segment, which is something that I've been trying to do forever and ever and ever. So was this this like part of like your interview for there or was this? Yes. So I I had applied and I was kind of going through it and I, I got a call back from the news director and he said, we like your we like your application. We think you could be a good fit. Like, why don't you come in for a screen test? We'll just tape a segment. We'll all review it here internally and then we'll like see what happens next sort of thing so i was like oh my god so it's like a true test the moment i had a penguins game the night before so i went to it was like a late night because i was out and i was like ramped up and i was like okay i like looked myself in the mirror i was like tomorrow is the day television you're gonna like be on a set you're gonna be recorded by a real camera not like my iphone or my zoom camera from like the podcast like this is the real deal you've worked to get here i like hyped myself up did the whole thing and i remember going into the studio so excited i was like this is the coolest thing like i get to be on a real set and there are people who are paid to like make this happen. You know what I mean? Like the production assistants and everyone around me and like there's someone up there directing it and I had an IFB in and they're talking to me in my ear and I'm like, what? Like this feels so real. I just remember how like ecstatic I was and how excited I was to have that opportunity and I think I try so hard every day now that I've do the show every day to like bring that same energy because I was like this is so cool like I never want it to feel normal because it's not normal like it's so cool you know what I mean like it is the day to day but I'm like I look around and I'm like this is so cool like I'm just so happy to be where I am so I try to like bring that same energy from that first day of like I didn't even know like it wasn't even for tv it was literally for the news director to watch and he was like newsflash you talk too fast and I was like turn it (laughs) (laughs) I knew this would come up again but you're hired but right so it worked out and it was just like it was a quick process it all happened over Christmas um which was like a cool special time because again my sisters were home like everyone was in and we got to like experience that whole thing together and it was really it was really special also like on a special personal note my oldest sister got accepted into med school like a few days before so it was like we were both celebrating these like monumentous like big life events of like we always dreamed about like our career and like Emily would be a doctor and I would be Kelly Ripa and then we would like (laughs) meet for Christmas and we would have like beautiful families that loved each other and it would be so much fun and we always talked about that and then like literally within the same week we were like it's happening like it's all starting for the same time for both of us and it was really a special moment that's cool. that I think we'll always like look back on you. Know? Yeah, really cool. All right, so what's the uh, what's the future look like for for Rachel Malik? I I I name dropped her before. I always tell people I want to be Kelly Ripa. That's always been the the dream. I think she's someone like we talked about before who makes it look so easy. She's just an effortless presenter and I just I just think she's so good at what she does and I would love to get to do that job and I feel like it's cool that I sort of am on like our you know local level now so I would love to be in the city I think New York is where I belong end game for sure I think that's just oh I just feel my most self in the city I feel like there are cool opportunities there I need to be near celebrities if I want to be a celebrity all that kind of stuff so (laughs) New York is definitely end game I would love to literally take over for Kelly Ripa if she one day yeah listen, listen up Kelly like if you're ever tired I would do it anytime. Like, you know what I mean? And they do a little guest co-hosting. So I feel like that just, just, I got to weasel my way in. Send the reel in. Send the reel tape. Yeah. Oh my God. None of the screaming stuff. I'll talk so slow and calm. Yeah. We'll save this little, I'll I'll, I'll extract this little video clip from this part of the show. Please do. I will say, we'll send it to her. I DM'd Kelly because I have this one skirt that I wear. It's like a pleated skirt. This is the Kelly Ripa skirt. The Kelly Ripa skirt. 
and I sent it to her. It was my first week. It was my fourth show. It was the Thursday of my first week at PA Live, and I wore the skirt, and Chris, like, shouted it out on air. They're like, you're looking very Kelly Ripa today, Rachel, and I was like, oh, my God, this is the coolest thing ever. So I was so excited, and I clipped it, and I sent it to her, and she replied, and she was, I said, I had to wear, Nuh-uh. I had she to, replied? listen, I was like, I had to wear my pleated skirt and my pumps to, like, pay homage to you because I've only ever wanted to be you in my career, like, and she was like, this is the nicest message I've ever gotten, like, best of luck, what's the station? And she like wow, you know, right so like that was just a cool moment of like Kelly Ripa DM'd me back. So like I like to think I'm in the back of her mind. She's like, where's that girl with the skirt? Yeah, where, like, is yeah. she? Where's my look alike? My fu- for- my future self. See. Oh my god, you you manifested it. I That's think. A, like I'm trying. I'm trying. All right, so listen up. When you when you make it, you know, when you replace Kelly Ripa, listen. you better have me Absolutely. on the show. I don't even know if they have guests. I don't, I don't even know. I, oh my gosh. I, I yes, look like, do they, do they have guests? Yes. Or is it just like her? I, I don't know. No, I, it'll I like be like Kelly know. and Ryan, whoever the co is for the first, you know, top of the 20, and then you go into so your it's gonna interviews. Be, it's going to be Rachel and somebody mm-hmm. and um, guest Bill. Guest Bill. All right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, we'll play I'm, this booking, clip. I'm booking myself on, Manifestation. on your future show. You got it. Yeah. Wherever and vice I go, versa. You're there. Yeah. See? Yeah, this would be beautiful. This oh my beautiful gosh, there's a great mutual here. partnership relationship going on here. This just a oh couple of media personalities yeah. looking out for each other. Yeah, no, no, no big deal. You know, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, though. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> well, this is great. It was really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you came on today. Oh my gosh, this is fun. I, I always love. I, I really enjoy like having other like fellow content. I'm just gonna call yeah. you a content creator yeah. because I mean that's what we are. But yeah, but you know we both like do like the same things and. We know all the crazy work that goes on behind totally. the scenes, and totally. Whew, hopefully, those cameras are still rolling. <laughs> You're so fun. You can start again. Take it from the top. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to. Yeah, do it again. Yeah, take two. Yeah, we'll okay. have to mention. We'll have to remember all those lines that we talked about with Chris. Right. This is oh. this is the final yes. mention. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. to feed into yep. Chris's <laughs> ego. <laughs> He's gonna kill me for that. <laughs> I love I'm you, Chris. Love you for it. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, I think we're gonna leave it here. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe the next time um, uh, we'll be on um, a show in New York City, Here's you and hoping. I. Here's yeah. hoping. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this was great. Um, Rachel Malik on the Stacks Podcast in the Blue Door Studio. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me.